Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Harold Anderson from the Spirit University. Welcome to tonight's teleseminar. I am genuinely excited and extremely enthusiastic uh, to have our guest on the call with us today to talk about uh, consciousness and healing. One of the things that I've been studying up and preparing for uh, tonight's uh, teleseminar is basically just really looking at the oldest of uh, spiritual teachings. Uh, those teachings uh, basically go back several thousands of years, and they say that everything in the universe is made from the same thing, from consciousness. And that is going to be the theme of tonight's seminar. The reason that this is important to us is that, simply put, if consciousness creates matter, then changing consciousness can change matter. And because our bodies are made out of matter, we often think that changing something in the body requires manipulating it directly on the physical level. And while that can work, uh, science is coming to grips more and more with the reality of energy and energy healing. Uh, so tonight, uh, we are going to discuss where spirit meets science. And we're going to be talking with Tina Zion, who is a medical intuitive. A medical intuitive is a psychic or intuitive counselor who specializes in perceiving information concerning the human body. Uh, this work is done by intuitively scanning uh, the body for areas of imbalance that may need alignment or treatment. Oftentimes, the medical intuitive will be able to explain the connection of the energy to an emotion or an event that's causing the illness. Intuitive information can then be provided to the medical doctor and or healthcare professional for further evaluation and discussion of potential future treatments. Many medical intuitives work with or are medical doctors themselves. There are many healers who easily could fall under this category of medical intuitive, but choose not, not to label themselves as such because they lack traditional medical training. Some of the more famous uh, individuals who people on the call might be familiar with as medical intuitives were Edgar Casey, also known as the Sleeping Prophet, Casey uh, recorded over 30,000 of his health readings. Um, Carolyn Miss, who now works uh, as a team with uh, Dr. Norman Sheely, and uh, she is the author of Why People Don't Heal and How They Can. And also Louise Hay from Hay House, her book Heal Your Body is widely used as a medical intuitive resource book. Uh, tonight's guest is Tina Zion. Tina is a fourth-generation psychic medium. She now teaches intuition and medical intuition uh, internationally. She's a registered nurse, a Gestalt-trained mental health counselor, and a clinical hypnotherapist. Tina is the author of Become a Medical Intuitive, the Complete Developmental Course, and the Reiki Teacher's Manual. She travels around the world teaching medical intuition, and her practice now focuses on mentoring individuals to discover and excel as an intuitive and a medium. She currently works with clients in England, Wales, New Zealand, Australia, Europe, China, Puerto Rico, Canada, India, Sri Lanka, and throughout the United States. Tina Zion, welcome to the call tonight with all of our participants here at the Spirit University. Let's get started and start talking about medical intuition. I'm so excited yes. to have you here. Uh, Thank now, you. One of the first. One of the first questions that was sent in to me, uh, Tina, is that many people on the call with us today are very familiar with psychic readings. That's where a person visits a psychic medium and then the medium connects to spirit to tell the seeker specific evidential things about their life and loved ones. How is it that what you do as a medical intuitive similar and different from that process? Hmm. Well, it's similar in that uh, a medical intuitive will always pick up uh, parts of the person's story because as each of us sit here talking together tonight, we all have our very personal stories. And so uh, a medical intuitive will pick those things up, but they will also pick up oh, the, the physical struggles that they have, and they will also pick up 
underneath all of our physical struggles or our illnesses is also a mental and emotional and a spiritual component. And that oftentimes, uh, you had already mentioned at the beginning of this, because I could still hear you, even though you couldn't hear me, uh, that uh, about consciousness and consciousness creating uh, our world around us. Well, our consciousness and every single thought also creates our, our physical being. Uh, it creates us in a real positive way and then sometimes in uh, ways of illness. So I would say that a medical intuitive um, receives all of the, the things that a usual intuitive would in a reading, but they can also hone in and become very, very specific for an illness or a, a struggle or a disease, things like that. So it's a combination. Okay. So give us uh, just a quick, your working definition of medical intuition. So I guess the working definition would be that it is um, the ability to receive uh, the story of the person and uh, also their people in spirit as well. And it also, though, includes the illness that we have and the physical struggles, the mental struggles that we have. And a medical intuitive can actually look within a person. So it goes beyond the story that emanates in our energy field and it goes into an organ, into a joint, into a, a, a location in their body. Uh, so it can become very specific. And, and is this uh, strictly uh, for uh, healing the physical body, or can you perceive mental and spiritual illness as well? Yes, yes, because a lot of times um, people uh, struggling with their spiritual life will come forth. Uh, it will also, uh, when I work with someone, it very often takes me uh, into a past life. It takes me into um, maybe karmic things that they are uh, learning from. So there's really kind of no end. And as far as the healing part, hmm, I would say that the book that I'm working on now, um, I discovered that uh, I'm putting uh, the different causes of illness into seven categories. And so... Um, and then I work from those categories, I guess, with the guide, with guidance from my spirit guides. So I have healing guides, I have intuitive guides, I have teaching guides, as, as we all do. Uh, and I really connect with their assistance uh, a lot. So there okay. is a, a healing component very, very much in it. And, and do you traditionally work closely with doctors and naturopathic doctors, chiropractors, uh, nurses, things of that nature, or do you work mostly just with patients who, who feel that something might be wrong with them physically, mentally, or spiritually? Years ago, um, clients would come to me, and uh, it was really they would come to me more in, I think, in secret, and they would never tell their physicians but now clients come to me and they said, well, I told my physician uh, what you said and I, wanted, I insisted on a particular test that you asked me to get. And uh, more and more people are telling me that they are informing their physicians and their nurse practitioners that they actually um, came to a medical intuitive. So I, I find that fascinating and it also gives the medical intuitive a lot of validation because I will tell people something and they'll say, oh, yes, a lab test just told me that last week. So I really want to emphasize to everybody that this is not in re a replacement of our medical world, but it truly, truly is an integration of um, intuitive abilities and assessments and also our, our medical world. But you know what? The, uh, the medical intuitives will pick up things that CAT scans, MRIs, lab tests, x-rays, just c 
cannot get to. They, they, and that's where the medical intuitive comes in is we can get to what's underneath an illness. And a lot of times that's emotional. It's due to our thoughts, um, things like that. So it's very, very integrated. I'd like to elaborate on that last point just a little bit, Tina, because here's one of the reasons I'm so excited and fascinated to have you on the call tonight. In that, mm. one of the one of the things that I've noticed about myself and my own life is that any time that I have gone against my own intuition, um, life has a tendency to kick me in the butt really hard, and I always regret it. And I You're have learned to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you're making me giggle. <laughs> oh, oh. Yes, that's true. And, 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 and what happens any time that I have gone against my intuition, um, I feel that there is uh, – I've learned to trust my intuition because of all the times that I have I have rebelled against it. And mm. um, I, I, I'd like to get your input on that because I'm sure the people on the call are going to have questions related uh, to medical conditions or health or things of that nature – but uh, what's your experience with that? Because when you feel something and you feel something very strongly, it's almost as if uh, the spirit is, is communicating that, hey, wake up, you should pay attention when I'm talking to you. Uh, please elaborate yes. on that. Yes. Well, I would, first of all, I would say we are not separate from the spirit world. We are uh, spirits with a physical body. So we're... Uh, we tend to think we're so separate from uh, our intuitive uh, life or from the non-physical life, and we're not separate at all. We're we're walking in it, we're breathing it, we are part of it. Uh, so it's absolutely the most natural thing in the world, um, but a lot of times we don't realize it. And one of the things I would say uh, to your example, Harold, is that when – we are truly on our soul's path, and when we're all oh, making a decision or we're at a fork in the road, that we will feel an ease uh, when we are on the right path. We'll feel like a, ah, like that. And that's one of, see, intuition is often so subtle that people don't realize they're receiving it. But if each one of us that are listening right now Think about that time where you took um, a different path or made a decision and you felt that just that ease, just that grace that came over you. That's one of the primary ways to recognize that you are on the right path, that you made the right decision, where, in fact, spirit will actually get louder and louder and louder when we ignore it, and it's like your example, Harold, that when we don't pay attention to it, sometimes we get a kick in the butt. Okay. So give people a little bit about uh, background on yourself. How did medical intuition begin or come into your own personal awareness in life? Hmm. Well, I grew up in a family, and when I used to tell people this, they thought that I even more had a special gift, and I really want the listeners to know that I have no special gift at all. What I had was an upbringing where on my mother's side and my father's side, they expected everyone to recognize their intuition. They expected um, all the kids to actually see the loved ones who have passed on. So there was an expectation, and there was also, it was so normal for us. So so I grew up, it was the environment that helped build um, those abilities. And so if we didn't grow up in that way, you have to create your own environment so that you realize you're not nutty, you realize that you really are picking up information because to not pick it up, you have, we have to work really, really hard not to pick up intuitive information. So um, where it became more medical in my history is I was doing a lot of Reiki uh, uh, sessions every week, and I was also teaching a lot of people um, 
uh, Reiki. And one day I realized I was doing Reiki and I could see like an x-ray machine inside of the woman's lungs. I mean, I could see um, just all the, the makings of a person's lungs. And then I was looking inside of someone's colon the next time. And it, it just spontaneously um, started from there, especially the, the medical. That's, how, that's really how it started, is really with uh, me doing Reiki sessions with people. And then I realized I was perceiving, not just with um, the inner sight, but I was perceiving all kinds of information about their illness and also what to do about their illness. Okay. Um, so you mentioned in one of the earlier questions that um, you can pick up the underlying story that lies behind an illness. Can you give us a few examples of that from, like, real-life uh, experiences that you've had in terms of working with uh, with your patients and, and uh, people who come to see you? Mm-hmm. It can be as simple as um, I will sit with someone and I suddenly will feel like my mouth is very, very dry, um, and I will know that that's a signal that they are very dehydrated and then they're, they're not keeping their self, um, you know, hydrated enough. It could be as simple as that. Or I sit with someone and uh, the word magnesium or the word vitamin D comes uh, into my thoughts, and I'll know that's information that I'm getting from them. Um, and then it, I could, let's see, some other examples. I could uh, be hearing, uh, like, arguments behind the person that is my client, and I will say that uh, to them, and they'll say, oh, yes, there's a lot of fighting in my house, and it's making me sick. So it's literally making the client sick. Um, So there's all kinds of stories like that. Uh, Relationships are oftentimes, in the struggles with relationships, are oftentimes beneath an illness. Um, you know, and like I said, not drinking enough water, uh, being low in certain minerals. Uh, I've already brought up um, actually past lives. I will sit with someone and I will begin, at least for me, begin to get pulled to my left, which would be the client's right, and I'll know that I'm um, going to perceive some information about a past life that is still making the person ill. For instance, I had somebody recently who suddenly had a horrible pain uh, through their their back, clear to their front, and uh, I said, well, let me check that out, and I asked my guide to show me, and I started that pulling feeling, and I saw them being stabbed with a spear um, from behind them. They didn't know it was coming. And yet they were still holding and carrying that trauma with them into their current life. So that's, you know, a few of the examples that I can think of to answer your question. So um, let me elaborate on a couple of themes uh, that you you just touched on there. Um, (laughs) Energy, uh, you know, one of the – one of the things that uh, is what you do in terms of medical intuition, the same as energy clearing. That's a term I've heard in uh, in the New Age circles for quite some time. Mm-hmm. That's some of it, but and it's hard for me to pinpoint um, this in a you know in a talk that we're having right now because I will very specifically turn it over to my uh, particular guides and. So the the healing aspect of it could go one of a I don't know a hundred or more different directions, but a lot of times I will get like a an energy prescription for the person. Uh, let's say their um, I'm just making this up right now, but let's just say their heart was um, very very empty, and I saw this hollowness in their chest and 
and an emptiness in their rib cage. And uh, I will ask my my guides, well, what are we to do about this? And um, I might get that they need to really inhale and imagine that they're inhaling the most beautiful vibration of green. And a lot of times I'll get like a spring green or a forest green. And I'll have them practice that while they're with me on the session so I can see them doing it. Because some of this is kind of far out for people. So uh, a lot of times it will be a prescription and I'll just walk them through it because that was what I received guidance for them to do. So that's that's one example of, and see again, that's the power of our thought. Because a client might say, well, I don't know how to do that. And I'll say, all you need to do is think green. And then all you need to do is imagine and think that you are inhaling it and drawing it down into your heart. And then, boing, I'll just sit there and watch them, and suddenly they'll just be building and building and building in that green. So that's one example of um, what I call a a prescription, an energy prescription. That's a wonderful example. Are there any uh, other simple exercises that you can take us through to demonstrate how we could either cultivate uh, either a healing quality or a means of increasing our vibration or uh, learning how to uh, cultivate the skill of intuition as related to our own bodies or those of the people that we love. Well, as you're asking me the question, I'm just checking with my guys to see, well, what should we do about that? And one of the um, – we can do it in just a, a minute here, too. And – I'm going to mention this, and some of you it will be very new and some it won't be new, but uh, when I've done this in my workshop every time, I've had professional intuitives who've done this work for, oh, I don't know, 25, 30 years come up and say that was profound and that has really heightened my ability. So anyway, what I'm going to, I'll ask everyone right now, if you would, just um, notice your breathing. Just don't breathe any differently, but just feel all the physical sensations of inhaling and exhaling. Especially notice just the air as it comes in. And notice that it touches the back of your throat as you inhale. And just really notice the physical feeling of all that. And then every time you inhale now, I ask you to imagine and think that you are also inhaling through your forehead. You are inhaling through literally your third eye. And just feel yourself inhaling Very gently, don't push it or force it. Just every time you inhale with your breath, you are also feel like you are inhaling through your third eye. And imagine the same sensations, just flowing in through your third eye and into your mind and into your brain. And let it go to the very, very center of your own head. All that energy, all that beauty, all that gentleness just flows in and touches the very center point of your brain. And just feel it. Just allow it. And just feel that the center of your brain just lightens and becomes brighter. And then I ask that you take the most instant, instant thing that comes into your awareness when I ask you to receive now a wisdom just for you.
And just notice, especially, here's one of the other tips I would give to everyone. Always the most instant, instant awareness that leaps into your thoughts, into however you receive it, will always be the clearest information. So notice that it should be very, very instant. Just notice whatever leaped into your awareness when I asked you to receive a wisdom. And Harold, I would tell you and everybody else that intuition is a receiving mechanism. We receive it. We don't reach out and try to grab it. We don't work hard to receive intuition. It's a very, very, very passive receiving of information that's all around us. And this is one of the primary ways, like I said, that um, professional intuitives have said makes all the difference in the world for their their own um, work with individuals. Well, I, I let me touch on that just real quickly because I, in preparing for tonight's teleseminar, I read that uh, intuition is one of the most trustworthy of the medical sciences. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're, we are there are so many uh, people who are skeptical about uh, intuition in general. Uh, do you want to touch on that just a little bit? And because uh, I'm sure you've had to deal with it, just uh, dealing with people in the real world. Well, you, there's, yeah, there's always people that say, "Oh, that's a bunch of hooey pooey or whatever." And you know, um, I am so solid with my a- awareness of how real it is. I just allow them to be where they're at. I don't ever try to force it. Uh, on anyone, um, and the, the people that come to my workshop, you know, they want to do this better. So I really don't find it very much in my life. I know a lot of people struggle that those, that some of you won't even tell, you know, family members you're on this call tonight because it's um, maybe against your your family's beliefs or their religion or whatever. So, you know, some people uh, don't have that comfort level that that uh, others have. So I, I have a real comfort level with it, and I allow everybody else not to believe in intuition if that's where they need to be. I don't work to get them to change. Wonderful. Now, can you can you or uh, can you do this when you learn the skill of medical intuition? Uh, on someone without them knowing it, meaning can you be behind somebody at the supermarket and recognize that they have uh, uh, a condition that they need to address? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I go all over the world now, and I repeat this in my workshops over and over and over and over again, that I do not do this uh, with anyone without their permission. Now, in the grocery store, if I notice someone, I could, and so can all of you, intuitively ask that person for permission. Or you can walk up and ask them for permission verbally or, you know, call somebody up on the phone. But I'm very careful to be very, very respectful of everyone and their privacy because intuitives can pick up their beliefs and can pick up future possibilities, uh, hidden pain, our our secrets, our fears, you know. And so I'm just very, very respectful of of it. Now, I can't help when it just kind of leaps out of people because I can see people's auras. So sometimes if someone's angry, it's just shooting out all over the place. Uh, but, no, I, I really ask and I beg people to be – very respectful, and not to enter into this sacred privacy without permission. Great. 
Uh, so one of the questions that was uh, sent to me, Tina, is uh, one of the people on the call wanted to know how they could shift their energetic blueprint to vibrate at a higher spiritual frequency. Besides the exercise that you gave for us, are there any tips that you could give to someone who is looking to shift their energetic blueprint? It's always, always with thought. When you brought up that scientists um, have are kind of catching up with intuitives, uh, it's always with your thoughts. So to think more positively, to think, think uh, more on a healing fashion to actually get in charge of your thoughts. And people will say, well, I can't do that. I've always thought negatively. Well, if you're not in charge of that, who on earth is in charge of you? So I ask because our thoughts are unbelievably powerful. They are running the show. They are creating your life, they're creating your body. Our thoughts and our consciousness, as you mentioned, we don't even know, and I do this for a living, I have no clue the depth of our power, how powerful we are. So please, please, please start with your thoughts. Wonderful. Uh, another question that I had uh, sent in to me is uh, how... Can you give an idea of how someone might heal from a trauma by using medical intuition? And are there uh, any uh, examples that you can provide from your real-life work? Hmm. Well, um, I'll bring this one up because I mentioned it in the workshop. Uh, I can give myself as an example that I uh, was divorced uh, after six years of marriage. And we have two children and so we see each other um, frequently, and now we have grandkids, so we see each other frequently. Well, he, uh, my ex-husband, r- refused to talk to me for about 25 years. <laughs> and so we'd get together, you know, for a wedding or a birthday or something, and I would walk up to him and I'd say, Hi, Larry, and he would turn his head and act like I didn't exist. So that went on for 25 years. And I got to thinking, well, now why don't I do one of the – methods that I teach other people and why don't I um, work with healing our relationship. Now, I asked him for permission intuitively and I got a no. So I worked on our relationship and I worked on all the painful memories. And what I did was with my thoughts, I sent love, I'm a Reiki person, so I also sent a, a Reiki vibration, and I sent it to my most painful memory. And I thought, oh, that probably did it. Oh, no, that just brought up all the memories. So for two or three weeks, I just kept repeating all the to this healing to all the painful memories. The next time we saw each other, I walked up to him like I always do. I said, hi, Larry. And he, he looked at me and says, hi, Tina. And the family all about dropped over. Now, the only thing that was different was the healing that I did with my thoughts, with the love, and with Reiki. Wow, great story. That's a short version of it, but yes, yeah, it's true. Uh, so the question that I, another question that I got is, uh, is spirit trying to tell me something when I experience strong, unusual sensations in my body? Hmm. Well, that's kind of a general. Hmm. That's kind of a general question. Um, now, when you're wondering about something, because in the whoever you know sent that question, you're wondering about the strange sensations. If you were in my workshop, here's what I'd tell you. I would ask you to sit for just a moment and ask, what does the, the strange sensation mean? And then pause and take the most instant, instant, whatever ju- that jumps into your mind. Whatever is the most instant thought, the instant awareness, and that's what it's about. That instantaneous um, re- receiving is an absolute, um, 
I guess the, the, the what do I would say, the best key to all of this. So, so you have to trust that feeling or that image, that, uh, that intuition that is communicating to you when you, you do what you just said. Is, is that essentially uh, an effective paraphrasing of what you said? For sure, because and uh, the trust will come. If you don't trust it right now, if you keep doing that and noticing it and following whatever you get, you will learn to trust it because it will be the most profound. Um, it will have the most profound clarity, I guess, is what I would say. And sometimes people have to learn to trust it, but to do that, start following what you get. And you will find out the, the big bumps in your road will become smoother. Okay. Another question that I got, and it's based on uh, something you said earlier, Tina, is you talked about energy clearing and how sometimes you could tell with your clients so, uh, that, uh, that there was arguments going on in the household. Uh, do, do you also get involved in teaching people how to protect their energy, uh, since energy is such a major component to this? How to, what did you say, protect? Yes, how to protect the energy. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be, what I'm about to say will be opposite of what um, many people have learned in classes and things like that, is that I used to create Oh, like we all have done these crystal um, egg-shaped forms around us and um, created things like that. Well, I, I, I kept getting the guidance that that was creating a barrier between myself and other people, and especially myself and my clients. So what I started to do was to build my energy, like I mentioned a little bit ago, to build my energy to be the brightest and the lightest because negativity cannot match that vibration. So the negativity moves very slow and sluggish while it, if we work at being the brightest that we really can, like the spark of light inside of our heart and building that up with our thoughts, and sending it out all around us. I mean 360 degrees, and most of us forget that we have a backside. And so a lot of times our back is vulnerable. So uh, that's how I would answer your question. I do not create a barrier anymore. What I do is I work at becoming the brightest and the, um, the lightest and finest vibration because the negativity, negative people, will tend to just bounce away from you uh, because they can't take the light. So let's talk briefly about your book uh, on uh, medical intuition. Uh, So first tell us about the book that you've already written on the topic and and what is in that book. Hmm. Um, It's become a medical intuitive and it's uh, the subtitle of the Complete Developmental Course. And I was teaching people how to do this uh, on a, a Saturday and a Sunday, a full two-day workshop. And the, the purpose of that book is for people to begin to open up, to practice. Uh, there's a lot of practice. Uh, yeah. So my purpose of my book is to have people really experience their intuition and to trust it and to hone it to be uh, with a medical focus. In other words, to be able to go in past someone's skin and perceive a joint or perceive, you know, their stomach, if they're having trouble with their stomach, that kind of thing. Um, So that's really what my book is about, and I actually was teaching the workshop and then wrote my book based on my workshop. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little bit about your workshop uh, that Mm -hmm. we are are looking to to bring you down here to Sarasota, Florida, to the Spirit University. Tell us a little bit about what you cover in your workshop and how long it actually takes. Mm, Okay. Well, 
the, like I said, all day Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I will discuss, uh, it, to me it's a step by step by step building of your intuition, but also the building of the medical aspect. And so there is, um, I will describe different steps, different concepts, and then we actually will break into small groups and things like that to practice. And so I uh, will have some photos of people who have uh, given me and, the, and classes permission to, to work with them. And you will work with photos to practice. And then it just builds from there, especially with the focus of picking up what's underneath um, medical problems. So that's okay. really what it's about. And it's, oh, I would say it's a good probably 40% of practice, too, because that's the difference when you, you know, we can read my book, but it, to put it into action is just fabulous. It will make all the difference in the world. And everybody tells me I have the workshop set up, Harold, that they don't have really any performance anxiety. You know, I'm not going to ask anybody to come up and perform, you know, in front of the class. It's it's working with photos, it's working in small groups, and then it just builds from there. So I think Wonderful. I'd love to tell everybody that there's really no performance anxiety. It's and I like I we have a lot of fun actually I have a blast doing it so I have a lot of fun I think everybody else does. Well, I've I've watched probably most of your YouTube videos at least one time and and I loved. Oh, thank uh, you. I loved uh, studying them as I was uh, preparing to talk with you tonight uh, on the teleseminar and I've really enjoyed talking with you. But tell us, uh, it, can medical Intuitives, can that be a career for someone, or is this uh, something that, that people would do uh, primarily as, as a means of both helping themselves and uh, helping their loved ones with the skills hmm. that you develop at your workshop? Mm-hmm. No, a lot of people um, have no intentions of doing it professionally, but they know that they are picking up information and they want to do it uh, even better. They want to trust it even more. And a lot of times they just work with their family or especially their friends. Um, and some people come and they have no intentions of working on people. They uh, work only on animals. So people have told me that. And everybody might be interested in this, is that the people, more and more and more physicians, and nurses and physical therapists and uh, radiologists and all kinds of medical people are coming uh, to the workshop too because they know that they're picking up information they're not getting from a patient's start. And it's, and they want to know what that is and why they're doing it and how to do it better. So more and more uh, medical people are coming too. Wow, that's that's fascinating. It's, it's great to see that uh, the scientific community, and I don't say this in a joking way, but that they're beginning to uh, to accept the spiritual arts uh, in this regard. Uh, that's very very exciting. Uh, can you give us a ballpark uh, figure if uh, someone, let's say, was looking to work with a, a medical intuitive? What does a session cost uh, with most medical intuitives and What's the length of the session? What's the potential outcome? Well, since I work all over the world and all over the U.S., what, I'm, what I find is the fees are very, very different. Like I live in Indiana, and uh, so it's um, different here than, you know, east and west coast. It's different. I just got back from New Zealand and Romania. I even taught in Romania not too long ago, and a physician invited me there and had a large group of of healers there. So it's also very, very different. Um, I would say it usually runs about the same as uh, like a counseling session would be in your part of the country. So it's often I I base it on on that because a lot of people will ask me that. Um, you know, how much an individual session. Now, I, because, um, 
I'm not doing individual sessions now. I'm focusing uh, on individual sessions and teleconferences like this to, te to teach people how to do this. Um, so uh, that question does come up uh, quite a bit. So just base it on whatever counseling is in your area. You know, mental health counseling is a kind of a good standard. I limit mine to an hour uh, because I'm back-to-back uh, -back usually. Now, I, a lot of times I'll tell my clients, you know, you've got so much going on, would you please consider uh, another session or, or more? Um, you know, I don't tell anybody they have to come back, but I would just say, you know, we can't get it all done today in one hour. So I'll, I'll ask them to please consider to, you know, come back for another session. Sure. Uh, well, uh, what I'm about to do right now is I'm going to open up the uh, the phone line so that people can ask you questions directly. Before I oh, do, good. though, I want, I want to let everybody know that we want to bring uh, Tina down to the Spirit University in Sarasota. And uh, we've been talking about the last weekend in February. Um, and uh, for those people who are on this call, I want to invite you, please write down the following URL. I'm going to give you a, a web uh, address that's very easy to remember. It's thespiritu.com forward slash Tina. And if you could go there and just opt in to the form, it's going to put you on an email list. We're not going to spam you. We will just send you information uh, and a, a, a light email sequence uh, giving you some information about medical intuition like you received on the teleseminar tonight and letting you know um, when and if we can arrange for Tina to come down at the end of February. We're very, very excited about this. Uh, but we, part of the reason for doing the teleseminar tonight is that uh, this is a new, the, the teleseminar is new for us tonight. Doing medical intuition seminars is something we're very excited about, but we want and need the support of our uh, loving community at the Spirit University. So please go to that URL, thespiritu.com forward slash Tina, and just opt in. And uh, then we will know uh, from being on the email list that uh, that is something that is of interest to you. And hopefully we will be able to bring Tina down at the end of February. And we would welcome having you there and having her uh, help you uh, learn all about becoming a medical intuitive. So I want to thank everybody for their patience with all the technical difficulties I've been having tonight. I'm uh, sweating profusely, but I've been enjoying the conversation immensely, and I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Let's open up the phone lines, and if you have a question, uh, you uh, right now should be uh, have the opportunity to talk. Okay, I just opened up my email, and somebody apparently was on your webpage, and they wanted to know a little bit about your advanced medical intuition book that you're writing. Hmm. Well, I'm actually in a, a book writing frenzy at the at the moment, and it uh, it's probably going to be t entitled Advanced Medical Intuition. And I mentioned a little bit about it a, a while ago that I've noticed over all these years that uh, illness or the underlying issues of illness, I've, I've developed all oh, like seven groupings or seven levels or categories of causes of illness. So the advanced book and also my advanced day uh, is usually the Monday after the full weekend, that it's about uh, discovering the cause and then also um, different healing techniques that my clients have said over the years have been phenomenal. So I'm, I'm teaching about the seven causes, how to find the seven, one of the seven causes with your client, and then also some healing techniques. Wonderful. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking. Sure. Um, and what are your goals for the future as a medical intuitive, do you want to uh, focus on teaching, providing sessions, or both? 
I have dropped uh, providing um, personal medical intuitive sessions because I am very, very, very busy with um, teaching people. So teaching people uh, through, you know, seminars like this and uh, my weekend workshops and also one-to-one either on Skype or on the phone. So I'm, I, I am switching, you know, and have switched to simply teaching this because I feel I can have a larger domino effect. If people in Florida, you know, really learn how to do this well, look at that domino effect. And then when I teach it in New York or, you know, wherever, uh, I just feel like more people can be helped in this way. Wonderful. So um, I want to see if anybody, uh, if you want to ask a question to Tina, please just unmute yourself if you're on a smartphone and uh, just introduce yourself and feel free to ask your question. I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, it's been uh, a wonderful evening for me in spite of all the technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, please ask a question. Don't be shy. Uh-huh. Go right ahead. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Hi, Tina. Hi. Hello. Hi, Tina. Um, this is Suzanne. I took a class from you about a year and a half ago or so in Portland. Oh, again. thank you. Yes. Uh huh. You're awesome, and I was hoping to meet you up again at the uh, American Nurse Association, but I missed that conference. But anyway, to make a story short, so I've used all the tools. It's wonderful. I. And I don't know if I'm allowed to ask any just to kind of demonstrate when we would do work on clients because I would say that the hardest thing is it's really difficult to work on yourself, unfortunately. You, it's really difficult. Well, I can, tell, I can tell you why. We, we are um, not so good at working uh, on ourselves in, um, as far as medical intuition because it's hard not to um, – it's hard to be objective about ourselves. And, right. and that's, really, yeah, that's really why. And, you know, if I think, here's my thought about it. If everybody could work on ourselves, we wouldn't need each other. And we'd all be <laughs> islands, you know, in and of ourselves. Yeah. When, in fact, you know, I think we are meant to help each other out. And so, uh, but you I know, every once in a while, I hold of an intuitive, uh, you know, for a, a session, to receive a session for myself. So I think that's why. And I've done that, but with my blood pressure, no one wants to touch it, which has made me even more suspicious. It's like, just bring it on. Don't be afraid to tell me what this is about because I'm not, you know, I've, I've been so medically gone through and there's, they can't find any, absolutely no reason. I've even had an, an angio. I mean, I've been looked inside my heart mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong. E- numerous EKGs, there's nothing they can find. And still I have this blood pressure. And so I'm kind of like seeking anybody. And every time I have someone working on me, they will always dodge the blood pressure. I'm like, what oh. is this? <laughs> Isn't that weird? I mean, I just find that really weird. So I'm like seeking high and low. And it's like, Mm-hmm. I'm at the point like bring it on, just bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, now, in that body mind connection, uh, right. and again, the thought and our body, that blood pressure, uh, a low blood pressure, uh, has that component of what's the use. Right. The, a low blood pressure. It's a, a, oh, like a, a, a symbol of a bit of giving up. So a high blood pressure is also symbolic. If we think of all these things as symbolic and what we can learn is that there is an internal, literally, an internal pressure that pressuring right. ourselves to do better or um, being critical of ourselves will build someone's blood pressure up too at self-criticism self-judgment oh you said right that's interesting (laughs) i mean i recognize (laughs) that and no i do recognize yeah yeah that's a tough one too you know because 
there's part of that that can be kind of – I'm not trying to turn this into a me session, but it's just difficult sometimes, too, because if you consider something kind of like your strengths at the same time, does that make sense? It's like a push is kind of a good thing, I think. It's like a striving, constant, like – moving ahead, but I get the whole critical, self-critical. I do get that. I, I will That's what that. came up, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Please look at that because it is, when we're so self-critical or self-judging, there, we are pressurizing ourselves, literally. It's a, it's a right. pressure rather than a creative, um, inspired action, there is a pressure. Right. We don't need to push so darn hard if we are always following what inspires us. Right. But thank you for that question, though. Thank you. Yes, well, thank, thank you, Susan. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. I can't wait to You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I, I, I have another question that just came across my email. Uh, somebody is uh, saying that they've done a lot of work with uh, acupuncture and uh, they've studied a lot about the chakras. Do you cover any of those topics in your workshop? Um, and if you could talk about how the, the workshop might benefit them. Well, I'm not sure whether they're receiving acupuncture uh, or they yes. are. Yes, um, receiving. Re- receiving. Are they receiving? Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I don't give an acupuncture. Um, I don't specifically talk about acupuncture. But I am, uh, the whole workshop in my book is about um, the health of our body in many, many, many ways. Now, I have chiropractors that come. Uh, I have acupuncturists that have come to the workshop. And I show everybody, I try to show everybody how we can incorporate this into what we are already doing. You know how how the the um, treatments we're already receiving, receiving, but also uh, if we're a practitioner, how we can incorporate medical intuition into what we do. Okay. Hi, Tina. This is Shannon Greenwood. How are you? I'm good. My question is, is that over the years I've had a lot of people tell me that I have healing energy or that, you know, you're a healer or you've got the marks of a healer in your palms. And over the years, I mean, I just I don't really understand how I'm supposed to do that. I don't really know if it's Reiki or if it's just through being a medium. And I'm kind of trying to find my place um, with doing those abilities. And so I started going to some psychic classes or things like that but the problem of it is is that I get hit with someone's negative energy there and the Mm -hmm. things that the bad things that happened to them would start happening to me in my life or sometimes I'd get a big energy cord on me that I had to get taken off so I stopped going to those places because I just didn't feel like some of the people who were running the classes were really keeping the energetic integrity high and cleaning the space after every session the way they should. So I'm well, kind of lost ask, now. Yeah, well, um, I know what you're talking about, and probably a lot of the listeners know what you're talking about as well. Um, probably, yes, uh, there might be uh, a lack of integrity or that uh, keeping the environment clear. But I would also ask you to focus on your own ability to build up your energy field. And for you to get, oh, like, corded into and or, you know, negativity affecting you, you have weakened areas in your aura. So I would ask you maybe after the call or tomorrow um, to just sit and just, <laughs> Scan and just feel and look, and it'll feel like you're just dreaming it up. But just look around and notice any weakened places that are in your field that aren't as bright as other places in your energy field or your aura. And I want you to, with your thoughts, send more power and power yourself up because you should not be affected. You don't need to be negatively affected by other people. But if you are, you've got some weakened areas in your field 
but you are the one that can build those up, and that negativity will just start bouncing off of you instead of um, affecting you. Does that kind of make some sense? Yes, it does. Okay, good. Then just sit, and, you know, it'll just feel like your imagination, and everybody can do this when we hang up. And you will notice either, um, oh, a, feels, a place feels weak or a place looks a dim compared to the rest of you. And don't forget, everybody, to look at your backside, too. Everybody forgets they have a back end. Okay, thank you, Tina. And so maybe that's why I'm not really understanding what healing I can do for others is because I'm too weakened to do anything for anyone else now, maybe. Well, you don't need to stay that way. You can get built up yeah. right now while we're talking or when we hang up. Uh, there, and it will only take as long as you think it will take. So please, if, if you're getting that message from all over the place that you have healing abilities, if it feels right to you, please consider uh, building that. You don't have to be horribly affected by everybody. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Tina, it, it sounds like, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, based on some of the questions uh, that I've gotten tonight and uh, just in our conversation, uh, it seems like a lot of healing uh, can take place at the workshop uh, as well, meaning that if people have had traumas or issues in their uh, childhood or in their life, that uh, learning these techniques, as you mentioned, can, can not only heal you physically but emotionally as well. Is that, is that a fair statement? Oh, that's very fair, yes. That, I love that you bring that up. The, the workshop, because we work at such a, a, a loving um, depth, but it is a depth, um, that, we, that step by step by step we build this throughout the, the weekend, that it is very profound for some people, for many people, in a very positive way, very, very positive way. So, Yes, there's uh, a, a wonderful cleansing and clearing and understanding and all kinds of things. Wonderful. If you have any questions, uh, please, now is the time to ask uh, Tina uh, Zion any questions that you have about what we discussed. Uh, and once again, please go to the com forward slash Tina and just opt in to the uh, special list where we can send you more information on the upcoming workshops. Tina, this is Donna in Fort Wayne. Oh, hi, Donna. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, in your new book, um, I was just wondering if you're going to offer some examples of some interesting cases that you've had and and what the outcome was for those people. Hmm. I tend to give a lot of stories um, in the, the workshop. Uh, there'll be a lot of um, actual stories um, uh, with of my clients and what was causing their struggle and uh, what uh, healing technique was used. And so, yes, I will tell a lot of stories, and they're really true. I love it, and you all will love it too, when people start coming back to you, giving you that validation that, hey, you were right on about this or um, you know, my doctor said I didn't have a broken toe, and you said, oh, yeah, I see a crack in your toe, and then a follow-up x-ray shows a crack in your toe. Um, you know, and it, it just really makes it very, very real. You know, this, yeah. this is very uh, real what we're doing. So I don't know if that I answers had, your question. Yes, it did. And I, I just wanted to uh, add something for the rest of the folks. I was doing a reading for someone uh, one time, and I just zoomed right in on her liver. And I saw her lo- liver in a dark color and, and all of this. And so when when the reading was over, I told her, and she goes, well, that makes sense. I have cirrhosis and hepatitis C. Yep. Yep. So there was instant confirmation of yes. what I was seeing there with her. Yes, so that, and I you know that that will help build everybody's confidence too. You it, unbelievably, people will yeah. say you are so right. They'll they'll keep doing that. Mhm. Yeah, that's so a good it, example. It's true. It happens, folks. 
<laughs> that, Thanks, thank you Alex. for your question. Yeah. You're welcome. Gina, I want to just, uh, on behalf of the Spirit University, I want to thank you for all the wonderful information and for taking the time to be with us tonight. I totally enjoyed uh, being with you. As I, as I mentioned, when I was a kid, I used to think that Johnny Carson had the best job in the world because he could talk with, <laughs> I thought, the, the most interesting people. But I have so enjoyed getting to know you, and I so enjoyed uh, our conversation tonight. And uh, watching your YouTube videos, it's been a real pleasure uh, having you thanks, here. Thanks, Harold. You always make me smile. Thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome.